we can keep our time on track. So I would like to welcome our first keynote speaker, Dr. Hassan Yassin, and he is a junior professor of Carnegie Mellon University in the U.S. Uh, Dr. Hassan is the technical director of the Continuous Development of Capability Group in Software Engineering Institute, one of the most prestigious institutes in software engineering at CMU, Carnegie Mellon University. Uh, he leads an engineering group to enable, accelerate, and assure transformation at the speed of relevance uh, by leveraging DevSecOps. So I think this is one of the most uh, recent keywords that we have seen in the industry. And his talk is about uh, reviewing the DevOps, sec, uh, the DevSecOps journey, what we learned on how to be a DevSecOps elite. And uh, this is a very exciting talk. It comes from uh, a hard work for over six years with 20,000 software uh, professionals being interviewed and analyzed. So I will uh, leave the floor to our first uh, keynote speaker, Dr. Hassan Yes. Yes, everybody can hear me? Yes, it's uh, clear. It was uh, great. great. The floor is yours. Thank, thank, thank you so much and good morning everyone. Uh, actually, it's a kind of a midnight for me at San Francisco. So good morning and I hope everybody is doing well and thank you for the opportunity having me at the conference. I wish I was there in person, but however, I couldn't arrange a timely. So what I'm uh, looking forward to expose and get some ideas from this as to what we learn and what we are with And I heard about the, the, the beginning of the talk as kind of a, a buzzword. And yes, it was a buzzword like Agile and DevOps and DevSecOps AI, but actually it's a real reality. So uh, this, this survey that I have been doing for almost the last six years really proved that it's a reality and that's really happening in the community. So I don't really empower and, and open up the desk house and go into the details on what things we are doing and what we learn and, and go from there. So it's about me and I have almost more than 25 years in the software engineering experience and actually I was the first person to start a DevOps course in, in the US in 2015 at Carnegie Mellon. I'm teaching the graduate courses on the DevOps. It's really interesting in my journey and on DevOps and DevSecOps, and I really started early adapters in the Department of Defense and Software Engineering Institute as really critical. Because when you look at the industry needs on software engineering principles, yes, uh, we are doing great, but unfortunately, as the education and as the organizations, we are not only doing a lot of uh, modern software engineering principles as you leave the industry. So I think the industry did a great work as advancing engineering practices versus as academic. So that's kind of like triggered something we see in the perspective. We said, why don't we create a curriculum or creating a content? What real science behind the DevOps and DevSecOps? So and with that concept, it started from 2015, and I started with five students at the fall semester. Now I'm teaching DevOps course every semester with more than 50 students at the graduate level. That's really showing a trend and what the relevancy are with the industry. As a parallel, I have been doing many other activities and really bringing the DevSecOps community together, which I have been organizing DevSecOps days tomorrow in San Francisco. And so I have been doing a lot of DevSecOps days event. And then I went to propose the next heavy DevSecOps day in Paris. We should do that. If anyone is interested in teaming up with me, I would like to bring DevSecOps space into the Kaya so we can have a community event of the leaders. What we are doing as a community, really we have to uh, build up the knowledge and we have to share our experience, which is the fundamental concept of the DevOps and DevSecOps. With the, with the community knowledge, we can increase our awareness, we can do better engineering prep practices with a high quality. It's really important to build up this community event together. So again, I'm repeating, if anybody's interested in organization community, first of all, let's build up the space in, in Korea as well. 
And also, I think it's important there to study the research conferences as uh, setting up a, they're setting up a sessions and working sessions or here, research groups. Other Paris conferences, an example, here, and then there are conferences. You know, some of the active member of ICU So, let's dive into the, the next topic. And then we'd like to cover up a little bit on the little bit from the their setups and then talking about our findings, what we discovered as the reality of the their setups. And then we can talk about the common challenges to each other. And I will have an opportunity to have an interactive session as well to be one of the fundamental uh, principles of the DevOps, having a collaboration and sharing of experience and learning from our each other. So let's look at the definition first of all. I know we heard about so much time and the DevOps, the DevSecOps means. As the official definition of DevOps from I3P and 2675, it is a set of principles and practices. And I'm going to cover the both topic separately. And both concept is enabling uh, collaborations and communication between all stakeholders, not DevOps. Because first of all, DevOps is technology between DevOps, but it is requiring the all stakeholders in the life cycle that we have in the software system. And however, as a community, and actually the part of the, the software security community, main security community, we did some, some DevOps activities for years, and actually started in 2010. But five years ago, 2015, 2016 time range, as a community, we said we shouldn't emphasize security. DevOps doesn't mean we have to deliver fast, quick, deploy in your security. Then we said, let's do the DevSecOps because we have emphasized the security throughout the life cycle, which is integrating uh, all the secret software development, operational, and, and, and all other activities into the requirements and design. So, in reality, if you do the DevOps well and automatic, we should cover up DevSecOps. Why are we reporting the DevSecOps? Because we know the secret elements in DevOps implementations. So on the IT1 2675, we clearly define simply as one of the quality attributes. Uh, however, with automation concept, with other uh, DevOps principles, we often unintentionally ignore the security. So I'm going to cover up today. You will see how the community unintentionally uh, or how we go ignore the secret. Then eventually get better out of it. So we'll talk about more. And I'm going to have a quick question for the Organizer, I'm not able to see the video of my end. Can you want to see my videos? Because it keeps on coming in my end. As long as, as, long as if you guys start seeing that, okay, the fine. Okay, good. So then we're moving forward. And when you look at the implementation of the DevSecOps, it seems simple that we are saying DevSecOps, but it's not easy. Okay? There are multiple dimensions and components of having a DevSecOps implementation. There is a cultural element, there is a process and practices pieces, and there is automation perspective, and most important, actually, systems and architecture perspective. We are engineering communities. If you don't architect our software well, if you don't architect our systems, there is no way we can implement the proper DevOps. Even though we cannot implement the proper security integration as well, if it is not modular enough, if it's not architected well in the system that we are building. But we can talk about Agile today and tomorrow throughout the conference site, one of the speakers will be talking about Agile training to build up an alternative incremental approach and establishing continuous integration practices. It's really requiring a modularity in our system and software that we are building. Why the industry did a great job, or why the Enable of this continuous integration concept, such as Amazon or Google, they're using a lot of a microservices concept. Kind of building up a, an application and specific to the a features or software components they are building, and they're able to deploy quickly. So we're going to talk about that deployment shortly. That makes very easy to implement those concepts. So let's dive into the uh, detail. Uh, DevOps has a four key principles. So I'm just going to pause it here for a little bit instead of saying that's it, that's what I'm going to allow, so we can have a second part later. 
So there are four main principles of the DevOps implementation. One is the communication and collaborations. Then other than the third is the code. Then automation and monitoring is the code. Maybe you heard about the Gene Kings or the, as the just humble and the folks who define the columns, the culture, automation, new measurement, and shape. There are there are many principles, but based on the SCM is an SCI based by my research, I came up with four because all are related to each other with respect to building up a DevOps principles. Yes, we have to collaborate and communicate, which is the fun, the fun, one of the fundamental principles of stakeholder engagements. So in the software world and community, we are building a code, but it's not just a developer. Now, we see a lot of other stakeholder integration with the many other part of organizations. So I'm going to show you the integration perspective. Now, when we build up communication collaboration, we need a physical concept. And all the scripting and provisions and all the components should be placed all together. And then we can build up automation and we can monitor and measure our practices. So I'm just going to dive all of them separately. So one thing I have to call out, uh, DevOps or DevSecOps or Azure, they are not really changing the fundamental software development phases. Still, we are following the typical, which we have done software development life cycle for years. It is not dramatic. Even the original modern paper, wonderful paper from Dr. Winston Strauss, and he said clearly, we are not dropping any engineering practices with respect to requirements, architecture, design, development, test, and, and delivery. However, we are creating an additional component on the feature perspective. Now, we kind of created a cadence of the, our feature that we are building, still we are following. I asked the question many times to my students. I said, I'm going to give you a quick test for you. Can you write me a hello world in the web application web pages? And quickly they just writing as uh, the hello world, but before they ask, oh, hold on a second, what do you want? Do you want to have a color? Do you want me to put into the you know the NGINX or if it's not better Apache? Tell me what you want as a hello world example. So immediately the engineers they're going to think what was the requirements? Immediately they are kind of doing some architectural analysis and even the short hello world application. So it's it's really Maybe we can, we, I can get audio question as well if everybody can hear me well. Apologies, kind of rushed through, but it's really a, a great topic. It will take more than an hour, maybe, maybe discover all this idea. So I'm open for any questions, Valid. Yep. Okay, great. Um, so thank you very much for uh, your presentation. And uh, I agree that it will take more, uh, maybe than an hour, uh, to explore all the uh, findings that you uh, have presented to us here. So, uh, but uh, we are running over time, but uh, I think maybe we can open the stage for a couple of questions sure. from the audience. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so maybe uh, Dr. Mohammed Fad. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Hassan. This is Mohammed Ramli from Cairo University. I would like to ask a question about how mature are vulnerability detection and automated vulnerability repair practices to integrate into DevSecOps? In reality, do you see like uh, people uh, sort of integrating tools for uh, detecting vulnerabilities and automatically repairing them, and they trust the solutions that come out to go uh, directly into deployment? Is that clear? Yes, it is, yeah, it's clear. I can much. hear you well. I can hear you well. So there is, there is a lot of uh, studies and also exemplary implementation on the DevSecOps with the automated analysis of vulnerabilities. Like one analysis, actually we have a research under CMU and we are able to look at the multiple analysis result on the static analysis, then learn what the, the expert will identify those findings automatically, A, repairing the code, B, looking for the dependencies in example and fix those dependencies or predict some other failures eventually and then integrate into pipeline so it's 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 a lot of tools already there and also the practices so that's really telling me uh, and using automation perspective 
on any vulnerabilities we can discover. Like one quick example, if there's I don't want to give the tool name specifically. If I know my libraries, if I know the spe specific CVEs on that libraries, then I can automatically get the new version of the libraries and automatically patch put to the, my base container image as an example. And now I have I have ready image as already updated all that the patch. That's how the, the SBAM file, which is bit of materials, is playing a key role. That's how the integration playing a key role, integrating automated vulnerability discovery is put in the life cycle. And other things that we have been studying right now, actually, it's, we, we probably could create an open source version shortly. And utilizing threat modeling concept, looking for the mitigation strategies, and look for the, any unknown things that we, we never really realized that, and looking for the libraries or analyzing the new uh, kind of a zero day concept and then feeding back to the threat model say here is the new mitigation strategy that we discovered as a threat we never thought about it before this is another automation is happening in the domain right now so short story yes it's possible it is doable there are a lot of exemplaries on automated vulnerability discover and automated patching mechanisms okay thank you, thank you very much uh, if there's any other questions for dr hassan yeah, please. Sorry, I think we we will need to. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think it will make it much easier because we have some constraint here. The question you have to be in the corner. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, thank you, uh, Dr. Hassan, for your very interesting talk. And um, uh, I'm Ion Barosan from Eindhoven Technical University. I have a lot of questions, but due to the time. I will ask only one. Uh, I saw that we have to be prepared for any emergent behavior that can appear when you use the software. How uh, can we learn, by example, from the system engineers that they are doing a lot of analysis of the emerging behavior before they build the software? Uh, can we learn from them from that perspective that we should do a lot of analysis Mm -hmm. related to this emerging behavior, uh, related to security before we start building the software? That's a great question. There's there's excellent question. Yes, we can learn a lot with the engineering practices as from the system level perspective. And now we don't want to be, again, goes back to the, our last word we said, we would like the more uh, uh, proactive, not a reactive. How can we become a, a proactive we have to learn from a domain knowledge. Uh, there is a new concept on the security chaos engineering concept that we have been talking as a community. Uh, with that community, we are looking for <clears throat> a system engineering perspective. Think about any possibilities. Think about all the scenarios that potentially we may see that and how we are dealing with the fault tolerance as an example, how we are dealing for a performance rate problem. Let's think about the security and as another problem we may see, try to de develop some scenarios based on the potential failures we may see, especially cloud environments. So there is a, a grow, uh, grow community interest. I'm part of it. We call it the incident database, a collection of data from various cloud providers and learn those scenarios, try to build up in our exercise we can practice in advance. We don't want to wait last last minute. Let's develop the scenarios based on the known failures from others that discover maybe DNS related issues, maybe some uh, uh, some policies in their cloud environment. Use those examples, build up that knowledge, and put into our DevSecOps pipeline. Practice those in advance. Which is more about the readiness. We call this thinking about secrets differently. Now the infrastructure will help us to exercise those elements before that happens. So I can I, we can talk a lot, but it's really an excellent question. Yes, we should learn and we should practice. It. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Hassan. And I think the um, the platform that we have for the conference may allow also uh, posting some of the questions, uh, and you can also interact with us uh, if possibly by answering these sure. questions um, uh, offline. So I think this is also Absolutely. a good opportunity Absolutely. to take this. Over. Uh, of, of the stage. So also, um, maybe uh, we are running a little bit late, uh, almost 15 minutes, but uh, with that, I would uh, like to thank you again for your time, uh, giving the You're time welcome. zone, and uh, I really appreciate uh, being with us today. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you.